Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. We recently answered the question, does every amateur radio operator need a multimeter? Today, we're going to answer the question, do you need a test lead kit? Let's break it out of the container and get a look at it. The answer is the same here as in the prior video. Of course, you don't need this test lead kit. But if you do decide to get into the world of learning how to use a multimeter, you're going to get these two basic probes, which you want to be careful how you handle them because they are pointy, sharp, and dangerous. So what happens is when you use these, you must keep your hands on these at all times. They become a little bit cumbersome to use. If you end up with a kit like this, what you have is test leads that allow you to grab onto something or touch it in such a way that you're not having having to keep these in place with the item you're trying to test. That's the benefit of going with a test lead kit. Now, I'm not going to show off just how much of a Bachelor of Arts guy I am in this Bachelor of Science world. I don't know what all of these gizmos and gadgets are called. I don't know the very specific application of all of them, but I'm pragmatic enough to know that I've needed these and used these in specific situations. So I just want to show you how I would use them. These look like they belong in a doctor's office. They are all pointy and sharp. They look like a hypodermic needle. That's not exactly what they are, of course. Well, exactly is not the word. That's not at all what they are. Are. But I'll show you the use for that, as well as some of these other devices. Let's do some illustrations here to see if this kit would be useful to you. There are two types of setups here. One where the cords receive an additional attachment that will go in one end, and then the other end goes into the multimeter, and then items which are self-contained. It has the leads which go into the multimeter, and then a device on the end of it that helps with the measurement. This has two metal prongs on the end of it, and then I presume this is for picking up some type of electronic component and getting a measurement reading on it. I've not used one of these before. I imagine someday I'll have a project that requires that. This is what I'll demonstrate next to show you what it does. So the first device I'm going to show you has a hook here on the end of it that is spring loaded and you would attach this around the post for hands-free operation. Let me back up the camera and show you what I'm doing here. I use a DMM Check Plus to check the accuracy of multimeters, and they have posts on the inside that you touch probes to, and in this case, because this is spring-loaded, you can attach the probe, and then you are hands-free to do something else. Now, something like this could work fine with the stock probes that come with your multimeter, but there could be many other instances where you're trying to latch on to something that you're trying to measure and test, and this gives you the ability to have one hand free or take that other probe in your hand and put it elsewhere on the device that you're measuring. I have removed the protective caps from these probes. Be sure you are extraordinarily careful with whatever test lead kit you end up with because you could really hurt yourself with these, and make sure to put the test probes back back on. Now, testing continuity, we can very quickly see that we have continuity, but what do you do when you have a wire that you don't have um, exposed copper or an exposed conductor? You also need to be very careful with this, recognizing what type of energy you're working with, and always keep your hands away from anything that would conduct harmful electricity back to you. In this case, um, there's nothing conducting between here. Now, I don't like to use this kind of probe, but it is not uncommon if you don't have the ability to access the bare conductor or a connector that has um, exposed metal on it, that you would go through the outer sheath of the wire itself. Like I said, it's not something that I would prefer to do, but you know what? If you have to do it, you have to do it. And so that's what these cables are for. I've just basically taken the probes through the outer sheath of that cable, and you can see we have continuity. So that's what you could use these types of probes for. Okay, you smart people, all you engineers out there, how am I doing? Am I entertaining you? Am I saying some of the wrong words using the wrong terminology and definition? I've admitted I'm a Bachelor of Arts guy in a Bachelor of Science world. And in ham radio, I find that to be refreshing. I can learn as I go. And that doesn't prevent me from getting involved in the ham way of life. I hope I haven't butchered this too bad from a pragmatic perspective. I've learned how to use multimeters for my use case and what I need to accomplish. If I've just entertained 
entertained you and uh, you know, you want to say something hilarious in the comments, go ahead and have at it. I'm pretty thick skinned. I don't think I'll be offended. So let's move on to the next topic. The spring-loaded hooks that I demonstrated a few moments ago, there are various sizes and shapes of them, and perhaps these are to reach into an area that you can't get real close to. Again, I'm not an engineer. Some of you know more specifically what a particular application would be here. And also do realize you can mix and match probes. So you don't have to always use the matched pair. You might want to use this to grab on to this connector on this end. Now it is connected and I am hands-free and I could put a different probe here. As a matter of fact, let's just take this probe and let's assume that I have the ability to have this in my hand and have a free hand elsewhere. And it's the same type of testing. So you can mix and match, but this one here has a uh, spring loaded clip that's just larger than the other one that I showed and could be used with larger conductors. And while we're at it with this particular probe, that is a banana plug style probe. This is a radial puck that I use in ham radio. So banana plug, you have a banana plug probe. So wherever you would have a banana plug connector, you would be able to use this probe set. And it comes of course in a matched pair. For this illustration, I'm going to use a combination of the original probe that came with this as well as the small alligator clip. I do have a cable here that I'm using for ham radio. I'm trying to take a one watt signal out of a QRP radio and send it into an amplifier. And this goes into a buffer. And I want to make sure that I'm using the correct cable. I have two cables that look exactly alike. And I need to know on this TRS plug which uh, corresponds to the plug on the RCA connector. So is it the TRS? Is it the tip, the ring, the sleeve? It's not the tip or the sleeve, it's the ring. So that's how using a combination of the two probes is helpful. I can hold this in one hand while I'm testing it in the other. Last but not least, we're going to use the alligator clips. They come in two sizes in this kit. This is a broadband HF antenna coil from G Gable Radio. And I'm going to just use this to test continuity of this antenna coil. And you could use this for something, let's say that your antenna wasn't functioning very well and you wanted to check and see if at anywhere during the adjustment of the coil, your continuity changed. That would be one reason or one way to test that out. I've highlighted the Kaiweets HT-118E throughout this video rather than the KM-601, which I often refer to as my favorite multimeter. Remember, I'm more of a novice when it comes to electronics like this, and so I gravitate towards something that's a little bit more simple for me to use an automatic. The 118E would be something that uh, is more along the lines of an expert device, meaning somebody wants to be able to dial in, hone in specifically on a feature that they want to measure and that's what they would gravitate to. It's also a 20,000 counts multimeter versus the KM601, which is a 10,000 counts multimeter. The 118E also sits upright on my workbench. And so that's why I frequently do have it up within a moment's notice. I can turn it on, dial it into what I'm measuring and I can see it very easily line of sight as opposed to picking this one up off of my workbench. I hope you found this information useful today. I'll talk to you soon, friend. 73.